This video is sponsored in part by Squarespace. Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Washington, D.C., March 6, 2017. President Donald Trump issues an executive order that limits travel to the United States by foreign nationals of several different countries and prohibited entry for all refugees who didn't have the proper documents. Well, wait. Let's define a couple things here first. A, quote, foreign national is a person who is currently in a country they are not a citizen of. A, quote, refugee is a person who has been forced to leave their home country, usually to escape war, persecution, or a natural disaster. And yes, refugees can become foreign nationals. Anyway, Trump's executive order did a bunch of stuff, but one thing definitely stood out. His order banned folks from Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Now, while there were exceptions to it, that part of the order was controversial since these were all majority Muslim countries, and many remembered that Trump previously had said stuff like this. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Critics called Trump's order, quote, travel ban 2.0. Wait. This was the second travel ban executive order? Indeed it was! His first travel ban was even more controversial. It also banned folks from Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, but was a bit harsher with how it dealt with refugees. Now, calling it a straight-up ban was misleading. It didn't completely ban citizens from these countries. It just made it really hard for them to get in. Still, later Trump himself called them travel bans, so I guess we'll keep calling them that. Anyway, after Trump Trump first issued the order, it ended up leading to chaos at airports with both protesters and folks trying to get home, along with around 700 travelers being detained. Well, the state of Washington sued Trump, saying the executive order was unconstitutional. In response, Judge James Robart issued a temporary restraining order which said the federal government couldn't enforce much of the executive order around the entire country. Trump Appealed, arguing the executive order was necessary to increase national security, but the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit agreed with the lower court. So yeah, that's why Trump issued this travel ban 2.0, or travel ban light, as I like to call it. The executive order signed by the president earlier today, protecting the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States, is a vital measure for strengthening our national security. It completely replaced the first travel ban, but it still seemed to target, well, you know, Muslims. This time, the state of Hawaii sued Trump, saying this new executive order was unconstitutional. On March 15th, 2017, Judge Derek Watson of the District Court for the District of Hawaii issued a temporary restraining order which said the federal government couldn't enforce major parts of the executive order by considering evidence other than the executive order itself, mostly the words and tweets of Trump. Judge Watson said the order was probably motivated by anti-Muslim sentiment and went against the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. But Trump and his administration argued it wasn't about Muslims, it was about safety. We're going to fight this terrible ruling. We're going to take our case as far as it needs to go, including all the way up to the Supreme Court. And fight they did. However, things weren't looking good for their fight. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit refused to bring back most of the ban and argued the ban mostly went against the Immigration and Nationality Act. Before the Supreme Court could really look at it much, though, the second travel ban had expired. But no worries, Trump had a third travel ban ready to go. On September 24th, 2017, he issued his Presidential Proclamation 9645 to replace the second travel ban. This ban was more serious as it didn't have an expiration date. It also applied to some different countries that the Trump administration said didn't supply good enough information about their citizens. So this time it restricted travel of nationals, again from Libya, Iran, Syria, Somalia, and Yemen, but also nationals from Chad, Venezuela, and North Korea. Wait, who is coming to the United States from North Korea? Huh. 
Anyway, it's also worth noting that North Korea and Venezuela were not Muslim-majority countries. The proclamation also called to improve vetting procedures of foreign nationals. And Trump was confident the courts would be cool with this one. Yeah, definitely not. Nope. Here comes Hawaii again. The state of Hawaii once again sued, and the district court for the District of Hawaii once again said this third ban was unconstitutional and went against the Immigration and Nationality Act. On December 22nd, 2017, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit once again agreed with the lower court. So Trump asked the Supreme Court to review the case, and they were like, Okay, dog. Okay, dog. The court heard oral arguments on April 25th, 2018. The court had to consider if the third travel ban actually did go against the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. Trump's lawyers argued, How could it go against Islam when two of the countries had hardly any Muslims at all? The court also also considered whether or not the president had the actual authority to issue travel bans in that way, and also whether or not the court had the authority to take on this case in the first place. On June 26, 2018, the court announced it had sided with Trump. It was a close one, five to four, with all five of the supposedly conservative justices siding with the president. Chief Justice John Roberts delivered the opinion, saying that the Immigration and Nationality Act Act did give the president authority to suspend the entry of foreign nationals into the country. The court also said the travel ban didn't go against the establishment clause. For example, they considered that two of the countries with travel restrictions were indeed non-majority Muslim countries, man. Not only that, there were lots of Muslim-majority countries in the world that Trump placed no travel restrictions on. By addressing the travel ban, the court perhaps inevitably also brought up an old, very controversial case called Called Korematsu v. United States, which I have a video about, which you can watch here. That case justified the president's ability to establish internment camps for Japanese Americans during World War II. Well, with this case, the court kind of overruled the Korematsu case, and actually, in her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote that this decision, quote, redeploys the same dangerous logic underlying Korematsu and merely replaces is one gravely wrong decision with another. Regardless, Trump v. Hawaii strengthened the president's authority over immigration and national security matters. Still, the decision remained controversial, as many folks just saw it as a sneaky way for Trump to prevent Muslims from entering the country. Now, Trump may have won the case, but on January 20th, 2021, literally his last day in office, the new president, Joe Biden, issued a new executive order that ended all of Trump's travel bans. So, uh, for now, this video is pointless. At least until it maybe won't be one day. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. This video is once again sponsored in part by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website. Easily engage with your audience and sell anything. Your products, content you create, and even your time. I tried it out recently by building a website for my band. Electric Needle Room. Three things I like about Squarespace. Number one, Squarespace helps you easily collect donations with PayPal. Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. Number two, Squarespace easily connects with your social media accounts. You can also automatically push website content to your social media accounts so your followers can share it too. Number three, Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. Categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to the link in the description of this video to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This video is also sponsored by my generous patrons on Patreon. You can see their names over here if they donate at least five bucks or more each month to my channel. I want to thank my social media followers for choosing this case to cover for Supreme Court Briefs. I had four cases to choose from, and Trump versus Hawaii is the one you picked, of course. But which of the other cases should I cover next? And don't worry, I'll probably cover them all eventually. In fact, I might make a video for every 
every Supreme Court case in American history. Thanks for watching.